Well, welcome you two friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So today we are going to be doing some sewing. I haven't done a sewing video for a very long time. You find me in my great room. Do you notice a little different? So I am working on creating more of a mid-century modern look. Behind me, I have double glass doors with shades mounted that you can pull up. I forget what they're called. <laughs> and you'll notice something new. I have installed a curtain rod. Now I know it looks super long. It is um, collapsible. <laughs> so I just kind of put it up there and you can see, yep, Frankie's looking out the window. I have a lot of loss of heat or air conditioning through these doors. Uh, glass, you know, it's just too good of a conductor of, of cold when it's winter and heat when it's summer. So I have installed a, a draft catcher and I had put the blinds up and I love them. And I decided, you know, it would be nice if I had an additional layer. After that last gas bill, <laughs> I want to do everything I can to keep the elements out of the house. So the reason I haven't been dropping Amazon links, guys, they changed uh, the system of how to drop links. And uh, quite frankly, I can't figure out how to do it in a way that I can post them. So I'm going to have to work on that a little bit. But if I can figure it out, I will drop a link to the draft stoppers that I did install. So today we are going to be working on creating draperies. So I was so happy when I found on Etsy this amazing, probably 1960s fabric. So let's go on up to the craft room. What I've done so far is measure the height from the bottom here of the curtain rod to where the bottom of the hem will go. We'll actually be taking a piece of this rod upstairs so we can create a shear on the rod pocket. There are decorative end pieces that will go on either end, but let me show you how I plan to create some really cool mid-century modern curtains. Stay tuned. You know, I just realized before we go upstairs, I want to thank you all for your prayers, both for myself and for my mom. Guys, my back is so much better. Thank you, Lord. Seriously. Um, I really don't know what I did, but whatever I did seems to be pretty much well. So I'm coming up on the two-week point, but I'm able to do things that I need to do, like put things on the wall and hang curtain rods. So that has been a real blessing. My mom, on the other hand, has my mom has severe osteoporosis, or let's just call them weak bones. So that is probably why she crushed or shattered, however you want to look at, her third lumbar vertebrae. So the only surgical intervention that I'm aware of, and again, I'm not a neurosurgeon, I am a nurse, is something that I have had done, not for the same reason, and that is to put a cage around that vertebrae and some implanted uh, cadaver bone. And to do that, you have to have an incision, two surgeons, an incision from the front and an incision from the back. And at 86 years old with my mom, other health issues, she's just really not a surgical candidate. So what they've done is they've put her into a brace that's um, from below her chest to her pelvis, basically. And that will hold everything in place so that she will hopefully heal. And then I'll be taking her back to the neurosurgeon at the end of April for them to do x-rays, see where she is, see what other possible interventions. She has no restrictions on getting up, but getting my mom out of bed and dressed and, um, she has to go downstairs to the dining room. She's she's on the second floor. Has been a little bit challenging because of the pain. So 
I really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for your encouraging words, for your prayers. I know my mom appreciates it as well. So let's get upstairs. All right, are you ready for the big reveal? I know I'm gonna get some comments that are like, that's the ugliest fabric I've ever seen. I think it's like ugly chic. <laughs> so are you ready? Here we go. This is the fabric. Yes, it is like a mm, limey avocado green and a bright blue. One thing about the fabric is it's somewhat sheer and it is a plaid. So it's going to be very important to make sure that it hangs straight, that it is cut straight, but it's easy to follow the lines. Um, the material feels sort of like, um, uh, it is synthetic. It feels kind of like a polyester cotton to me. Not, not quite sure, but we need to cut so that I have enough for the header. So what goes above the rod, if you want to roughly look, the actual rod pocket, the length of the drape, as well as the hem. So it's 81 and three quarter inches from the bottom of the rod to the bottom of the hem. Now let me reach around here. And here's a section of the rod. It's about an inch in diameter but you need to make it a little bigger than that so it will fit on the rod. So it is spot on one inch. So probably one and a quarter to one and a half ish. So it will easily go over the rod and especially go over the seam because the rod is in three pieces because it's quite a long stretch. Now, some of you may be wondering, why are you making draperies to cover a door? Well, I'm going to make them sheer on the rod and not overly full so that I can push them back and go in and out of the door, but close them to help with keeping or insulating from heat and cold depending on the season. So I'm gonna do some calculations here. I'm first gonna lay my fabric out. I will measure it, make sure that it is cut so that it is square, so to speak, and then we'll get started sewing. I will be using a bluish teal thread and I'm using my Husqvarna Designer Epic 2. It is so epic, guys. Love my new machine. And let me show you something. Now, yes, I know this is still there, but look, all of the floor, I'm gonna move the chair. Ta-da! Is clean and wait for it. I'll just show you briefly flip you around here and I dropped the curtain rod I was able to put all of my large lengths of fabric on bolts in here and my smaller pieces of fabric in the bottom in one tub so got that done and guys I I know I need to do a live let me just share with you um the estate sale auctioneers were supposed to be there Monday to pack up. They have decided they're coming Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, um, it's a great company. I, I shouldn't be so negative. Um, and they said it's going to take two days to pack up. So next week is going to be like super busy. <laughs> so I'm trying to film ahead. And it actually snowed last night, two inches. So it's a good day to stay inside. And so, because I haven't had much time to do things for myself. So why was I telling you all that? Oh, well, it'll come to me. Let's get sewing. I was telling you all that because I'm not sure when I can schedule the live, but I haven't forgotten about it. Okay. So what I did is I laid my fabric out on the floor because, oh, pardon my hand, because it is a big um, drape, you know, I want it clear to the floor. So I kind of eyeballed like, okay, if I finish the raw edges and flip it, how big do I want the header? I need a 12 inch allowance for the header, seven and a half inches for the hem, adding that to the 81 and three quarters from the bottom 
of the rod to the bottom of the hem, I need 101 inches and a quarter. <laughs> so I'm going to cut some panels. And then the first thing we're going to do is finish those raw edges. So because it is a very loosely woven fabric, I will be sewing a line about a half inch in, flipping that so it will sew on the seam and then finishing that. So stay tuned. All right, I have my 101 inch and a quarter <laughs> fabric cut. And let me just show you, this is the selvage edge. And as you see, there are some threads on the edge. Rather than to cut them, because I can see that it kind of links the fabric together, what I'm going to do is sew about a half an inch so that I have a line. I don't have to press it turn it once and then turn it again and then I will stitch it to keep that selvage edge as well as any raw edges close together. So on my machine here I will click sewing, I will click seam and it will tell me all the things I need to do. I have my machine all set, all threaded and let me just show you what it looks like to sew that line of demarcation. Oh, hold on, guys. Well, that didn't work out so well, did it? <laughs> One advantage of this machine is that it has an automatic needle threader. So I'm gonna have to redo the bobbin. So I'll just show you that while we're working on it. You hook the bobbin through these little hooks, hold your thread, use the hand wheel, pull up. All right, super simple. Now, you cooperate. Uh, I just filled the bobbin. Sometimes I don't thread it properly. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, I've got it on the half inch mark. It automatically fixes it at the end or secures the stitch. And then I'm just using the one half inch guide. And I will just continue sewing this line, trying to keep it as even as possible because any unevenness with this plaid is going to show. So I'm going to continue on. I will bring you back to show you how I flip it and seam it down. So because this fabric is a little bit on the floppy side, you know, it's not like a cotton twill or a denim or something like that, I took a spare piece, tested it to make sure that it would withstand ironing. You know, that is one disadvantage of, wow, that's gonna be hard to see, of purchasing a fabric that you don't know a whole lot about. So I can't even see my stitching line, but it will help it fold and iron over. What I'm using here, and again, guys, sorry, I, I've got to figure out the links. If you like to sew, this is an investment that you won't regret. This is the Rowenta Perfect Steam with Micro Steam 400. And this thing is a beast. It has a huge water tank. I can actually leave this on all day. It doesn't use a lot of power. And it will stay ready to go for all of my sewing needs. So what I will do here is I am going to get a measuring gauge because it's so hard to see that. Might be because I'm old and my eyes aren't the best. But I will just steam this into place. And then let me hold it up for you. It folds over really nicely and then I'll be able to fold it the second time, press it again, trim any 
um, stray pieces that are sticking out. So I'm going to grab a hem gauge so I can keep it very precise so our plaid won't be off. I'm going to press the whole side. I'm going to sew it down before I do the same on the other, just in case it doesn't work out. And if it didn't work out, I could simply cut that off with a rotary cutter and go to plan B, but I'm sure it'll work. So stay tuned. Guys, that worked like a dream. So here's what the outside looks like. Here's what the inside looks like. I am going to press it. One thing I learned very quickly with this fabric, because the weave is very loose, it's easy to distort. So it's going to be so important to keep those plaids lined up and to not pull it out of shape. So some of you may be wondering, why didn't you just buy like insulated drapes to hang over? Because that's not what I want. <laughs> I really am going for that mid-century modern look. That's very important to me. And I promised I would do a shout out. Guys, you got to check out. If you shop Etsy and you love fabric, and I'll leave a link, Kiki, K-I-K-I, -K -I, Kiki Universe. She has amazing uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, some really cool retro fabrics. You, you just, just for the eye candy, you should go check her out. Tell her Kim from the Wellness Homesteader sent you if you decide to order anything. I'm not affiliated. I don't get anything for that. But you know, small businesses are struggling right now. I think we're, we're all struggling right now. I have not had time to sew. I have not had time to make soap. And this is the longest I've gone without making soap. And guys, I'm going through withdrawal. I have to tell you, I really am. See how perfectly that steams. Super impressed with the iron. Actually, Miss Gay over at Apron Strings has one. And we talk via Marco, which is a video chatting app. And I'm like, I see you has something new <laughs> or something I'm not seeing. It wasn't new to her. What is that? And she shared it with me. And guys, I ordered it that day because my previous iron was um, beyond itself. And I have never looked back. I did not check the price, guys. Three, four hundred dollars is not cheap. It is worth every penny. This will last you a lifetime. And I use this through making all my canning mats and mitts that you also graciously purchased. And I'm telling you, it's it's amazing and it makes a big difference in the quality of your finished product. I, I wasn't going to do all this ironing, but I quickly learned I had to. And when I was thinking, I'm not going to iron that. I'll just like seam it over. I started thinking about, got to make sure I'm doing this on the correct side, which is not real easy to tell. Um, I could hear my old home ec teacher saying, you know, you sew with your iron first and a good seamstress always irons. So, yeah. You know, guys, I don't know. This, this is really hard to tell right and wrong side, but I guess as long as I make all the drapes the same, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I don't think it really matters. And I actually like the side I chose as wrong side the best. Okay, I don't wanna seam it on the wrong side. So I'm just gonna do the same process on the other side. I will bring you back. We'll start working on the header, exciting. So, before I start sewing the header, it occurred to me that I probably should cut my second panel. Hi, Frank Frank. <laughs> Frank said, what are you doing in here, my mom talking to yourself? I want to say hi to people. Huh? Come here, pretty boy. Say hello to the people. Oh, look how pretty that kitty is. <sighs> Frankie's a little bit afraid of the ironing board. <laughs> So I'm kind of surprised he's up here. So, okay, this never happens to me. What I did was I laid my panel, which is still a raw edge at the top, on my next piece of fabric. I purchased two cuts of fabric because I wanted to make sure that I still had enough. Yeah, Frankie's gonna help me. <laughs> which means he's gonna lay right where I need to work. Um, it matches perfectly. 
because what you don't want to happen is to hang your drapes up and the plaids not match evenly. I don't know how well you can see that. So I'm going to fight with a cat <laughs> to get off the fabric and um, yeah, maybe go get him a box because that'll entertain him for a minute and um, cut my second piece and then we'll start working on the header. Stay tuned. So what I have done to create the header is I picked a point on the plaid and ironed very evenly across. So this is going to be the top of our drapery. And I also sewed over the edge, the raw edge, sewed that down. So now that it's well pressed, all I will need to do is simply sew the bottom of the header in place in a straight line as straight as I possibly can, matching up plaid as well as I can. So it's the same process over and over. I do have a tip for you all. If you're sewing with a print that has to be matched or you're sewing with a fabric that's really stretchy, when you're working with voluminous amounts of fabric, don't let the fabric pool on the floor flip it up on your sewing table so that it is not pulling, stretching, and creating um, distortion in your sewing. So I'm going to get busy sewing the bottom of this header. Then I will determine how big I want the pocket. And I will bring you back at that point because I'm going to press the drape and then I'll bring you back. I'm going to hang it up and see how it looks and make sure that I have the right dimensions for the hem. Just a little update. <clears throat> so I'm sewing along and I'm like, wow, that's gonna be a lot of header. But I measured it 12 inches. Well, guys, the header, which is the rod pocket, is 12 inches total. Not fold it down 12 inches, that makes it 24. Thankfully, I realized it before I had completely sewn everything. And let me tell you, this thing is the devil to seam rip. So here's what I did. I did get all of the, let me bring you a little different angle. Very carefully got all of the threads out without making any holes in the woven fabric. Then I already had my 12 inch line marked. And since I've sewn a seam down, I thought, wow, how do I do this so that I don't have too much and then my hem is too short. Thankfully, I had already ironed that down, so I just re-ironed down to the line. And this time I'm going to pin it because what I have learned, or I did learn, is it becomes a little bit difficult to keep all the plaids straight when you're sewing because it is so stretchy and woven. So, you know, pins are kind of a basic thing, but... I thought with pressing, I wouldn't need to do that because it presses so beautifully. So I was wrong. <laughs> so just to show you, yes, you know, when you're sewing out of your head without a pattern, sometimes you do make errors and mistakes and you just have to have patience. And I'm just picking threads off and throwing them on the floor because once I finish sewing, everything will be covered with thread and lit. All right, I will bring you back when I've corrected my problem and I have this drapery rock drapery up on the rod. This is always the fun part. So do you see how the rod is dipping in the middle? Um, that is because there is no support in the middle yet. Definitely going to have to add that, but it enabled me to, excuse my little chair, decide on the length of the drape. And again, guys, the sun is shining, there's snow on the ground. It will be uh, less sheer, of course, at night, and less sheer if I have enough fabric for a third panel, which I'm not sure that I do, but let's keep going. So this is actually day two of curtain making. I have two panels completed, and as you see, that plaid matches up perfectly. What I need to decide now is I do have enough fabric to do a third panel, which would make it much, much fuller. And so, yes, that's the next decision that I need to make.
So drop me a comment below. Would you make a third panel? Do you like them as they are? I really think I'm leaning towards the third panel, but I would love to hear your feedback as well. I hope you've enjoyed this sewing video. I hope it gives you some encouragement that sewing is a very valuable skill that you can use to do all sorts of things in your home, to have your home the way you want it without spending the money that it would have cost me to purchase actual vintage drapes, which would maybe not have held up as well since this was new old stock, or even to purchase drapes that really weren't my choice and didn't match my decor. And as always, be healthy, be well, be blessed, and I will see you all very soon. Take care.